This is Scene 4 of Spy Harmony, written by Wolfgang Schuler and registered with the Writers Guild of America East on December 21, 2015, under registration number 1284429. This is a work of fiction. Any similarities to persons living or dead or actual events is purely coincidental. It is now morning. Agent Balboni sits in the Portsmouth Towers Hotel lobby. She is providing surveillance and backup for Agent Ferguson. She sees Philip Kernan enter the hotel at ten past ten and messages Agent Ferguson of his arrival. He's arrived. OK. Activate your mic app. We see Agent Ferguson clicking on his phone and says, OK, done. Can you hear me now? Hey, sexy. Agent Balboni reads his message, rolls her eyes in disbelief and responds, Mike, OK. Moments later, we see Agent Ferguson standing in front of a mirror, fully dressed. He straightens his tie, puts his gun in his holster, sticks the gold kangaroo lapel pin in right lapel of his suit jacket. Now he grabs his aluminum briefcase, looks in the mirror once more and says, It's showtime. Agent Ferguson now leaves his room and takes the elevator down to the lobby. It is now 16 minutes past 10. Agent Ferguson now exits the elevator in the lobby and walks towards the hotel exit. He pauses and waits, looks at his watch. Philip Kernan observes Agent Ferguson, notices the gold kangaroo lapel pin. He looks around, looks at his watch. It's 19 past 10. He walks towards Agent Ferguson, reaching out his hand, pretending that he knows him, and says, Bob! Phil, I have a car waiting. May I help you with this? He reaches out to grab the aluminum briefcase. Sure, it's yours. It's heavy! Special packaging so it doesn't leak. Understood. Come, I have a car waiting for us. They walk out of the hotel to a waiting car. The driver opens the door and they get in. The car drives off down the road. Philip Kernan and Agent Ferguson are in sitting in the back talking. We see Agent Balboni in her car at a safe distance in slow pursuit. She has her Bluetooth headset on and is listening in to the conversation between Agent Ferguson and Philip Kernan. Bob, as we've discussed, this is just the first order. I have two other interested parties that are eager to participate. Phil, refresh my memory, would you? Are we talking about the guys in the Middle East? Yeah, as we discussed, there's one in the Middle East, one in Northeast Asia, and one in the South Pacific. I'll let you guess the names. Ah, so Iran, North Korea, and New Zealand. Damn Kiwis again. Bingo! They have the money, and they are relentless in getting what they want. Just like insects, you can shoo them away, but they always come back to get you. How much yellow cake can you get your hands on? Based on what you are telling me, I'm going to have to supply enough for at least three nuclear warheads. That's an awful lot of yellow cake. How much? They'll need about 1,670 kilograms per nuclear warhead. In pounds? What is it in pounds? Phil, that's 3,674 pounds for each nuclear warhead. Holy crap! Can you supply that much? I need to know now. No problem, Phil. If your customers have the money, they can have their yellow cake and eat it too. But there's something I don't understand. What is New Zealand going to do with yellow cake? I wasn't aware they had any enrichment capability. Yeah, funny that. I have no idea. All they told me was that they wanted tons of yellow cake. Both men seem befuddled and have confused looks on their faces. Mr. Kernan, shall I garage the car? No, we'll need it later today to return our guest to his hotel. Okay, very good, sir. The car approaches a big iron gate. The gate opens. We see the car drive down the driveway and double park next to other cars already in the semicircular drive in front of the house. Now we see Agent Balboni pull off the road a little away from the gate. She sits and continues to listen to the conversation. We see the three occupants of the car get out of the car. The driver walks off to the right. Philip Kernan and Agent Ferguson walk towards the house. Nice house, Phil. Love the cars. Only the best will do. Let's go inside and see what we've got in this briefcase. I'll follow you, Phil. Philip Kernan and Agent Ferguson walk into the house and proceed to a living room area. A maid is seen standing ready to take any orders. Philip Kernan motions to Agent Ferguson to sit on the couch. Please sit. Can I get you something to drink? Yes, Phil. Thank you. Some Bengal spice herbal tea caffeine-free would be nice. That's awfully specific, Bob. Sarah, would you get some Bengal spice herbal tea caffeine-free for our guest, please? Yes, sir. Sarah the maid walks off to the kitchen, while Philip Kernan excitedly places the aluminum briefcase on his lap to open it. Bob, is there anything I should know before I open this? Yes, Phil. You shouldn't have it on your lap like that. 
In a panic, Philip Kernan jerks the aluminum briefcase off his lap and puts it on the floor and asks, And why is that, Bob? Phil, although the sample is well insulated, there is a slight chance of radiation leaking through. So, how do I verify the sample is in the briefcase, Bob? Well, Phil, you can wait 20 years till your testicles have cancer, or it's best opened in a nuclear processing facility by experienced personnel. Well, Bob, I can't wait that long, and I obviously don't have a nuclear processing facility handy right now. You should have told me this in advance. I am not going to transfer the remaining bitcoins to your wallet until I'm sure this is real. Agent Ferguson now leans forward and says sternly, Phil, I can assure you it is real. I wouldn't fly 26 hours from Sydney to America just for the fun of visiting you. I expect to be paid or the deal is off and you can buy your yellow cake somewhere else. Oh yeah, there is nowhere else. Here is your tea, sir. Sarah, please leave us alone. Yes, sir, as you wish. Seems you have me in a corner, Bob, and I'm not happy about it. I have no choice but to trust you this time. I hope you don't disappoint me, Bob. No worries, mate. Now let's discuss a time frame and destinations for delivery for the full shipment and your two other customers. The men now lean forward and start their discussion. Meanwhile, outside we see Agent Balboni in her car parked on the side of the road listening to the conversation between Agent Ferguson and Philip Kernan. Another car drives past, slows down, turns into the driveway of the property. It stops for a moment, the gates open, and then it drives in. We see two men exit the car and enter the house. They walk swiftly to the living room where Philip Kernan and Agent Ferguson are having in-depth conversation. The two men interrupt the conversation between their boss Philip Kernan and Agent Ferguson. Boss, need to talk privately. What's up? Really need a minute privately. Yeah, privately. Be right back. You need more tea? Sarah, Sarah. Yes, sir. Get our guests some more tea, okay? Oh, okay, thanks. Meanwhile, Philip Kernan now walks outside with his two thugs that just interrupted him. We see Agent Balboni parked on the side of the road. Another car drives past slowly, again turns into the driveway for the property, pauses then drives in. Something is going on. Agent Balboni sends a message to Agent Ferguson. Think I might have been spotted, going to change my location. Two guys just came in, agitated, having private chat now with Kernan. You should leave immediately. An aerial view shows three vehicles leaving the property via the rear entrance. Two of the vehicles turn left and one turns right. They disappear out of sight. We now see Agent Balboni driving away. We see the three cars converge on the spot from all sides, but Agent Balboni has disappeared. Philip Kernan comes back into the living room. He sits down. He appears distracted. Hey, Phil, is everything okay? Not sure. Boss, please, one second, please. Excuse me again. Yeah, okay, maybe I should go and we can discuss later at my hotel, perhaps over dinner. Yeah, okay. Sarah, Sarah. Yes, sir. See that our guest gets back to his hotel. Yes, sir. Okay, dinner at 8 p.m., Your hotel, and then some fun afterwards? Okay, thanks. Agent Ferguson leaves the living room with Sarah the maid to go outside to the waiting car. Agent Ferguson gets into the car and is driven back to his hotel. Moments later, we see Philip Kernan and a bunch of thugs come into the room. Boss, we ran the plates on the car parked nearby. No CVR records found at any DMV. Plates don't exist on any registered vehicle and have never been registered. Interesting. Send up the drones to monitor our property perimeter. Okay, boss, I'm on it. On his way back to the hotel, Agent Ferguson sends message to Agent Balboni. On my way back to a hotel. Everything okay? Where are you now? Hello, are you there? Are you okay? Agent Ferguson waits several minutes, getting concerned, then finally receives a reply message from Agent Balboni. Talk to you later. Getting new car. Seriously? Is this really a good time to go car shopping? Fool, of course not. Car now targeted. Of course. I knew that. Just kidding. Yeah, right. We see the car arriving at the Portsmouth Towers Hotel. Agent Ferguson gets out and walks to the lobby entrance. This is the end of scene four of Spy Harmony. Join us next time for more scenes from the movie Screenplay. Written by Wolfgang Schuler and registered with the Writers Guild of America East on December 21st, 2015, under registration number 1284429. This is a work of fiction. Any similarities to persons living or dead or actual events is purely coincidental.